Namaste. So let's take a little break. <laughs> We've been going deep in Kata Upanishad, and I think it's time for a little change. So I want to go over the source. Where is this information coming from? Is it just something that somebody made up, or does it have a higher origin? Well, we all know that the source or the highest source of spiritual knowledge, the original source of spiritual knowledge, is the Vedas. And, you know, there are four Vedas. Everybody knows that, right? Ved, the root word, means to know. So in Veda is something that carries knowledge. So the four Vedas are there, and if you look into them, they have many different subparts. And embedded in those parts are the Upanishads. And we'll show you exactly how this is structured in just a minute. But first I want to say that the Vedas are divided into two broad sections or topics, Karma Kanda and Jnana Kanda. A karma, of course, means work, but it also means duality, because to work, you have to have a worker and something worked on. You have to have a means of cause and effect to produce certain results that accrue to the worker. So this is all duality. And indeed, the object or the result of the karma kanda section of the Vedas is that one takes birth again, hopefully in a higher family, a higher world, a higher situation with better karma, better facility to advance in self-realization. But jnana kanda, jnana, well, some people say that it means knowledge and it begins from knowledge, but actually book knowledge is called vidya. Jnana means realized knowledge, that one directly sees, directly experiences, directly understands the non-dual truth, Brahman, the self, the absolute. So this Jnana Kanda section of the Vedas is pretty much all the Upanishads. There's 108 common or well-known major Upanishads and many, many more minor ones, probably hundreds of them. Uh, many of them are original to the Vedas, but many of them are also ancillary after the Vedas. Now we're going to be talking about the four Vedas and their parts and the different literatures embedded in those parts. We're not going to be talking about, for example, the later works like the Puranas, Mahabharata, the Itihasas, the Tantras, the Agamas. I mean, there's so many. It's like an ocean. But most of these works, unless they are commentaries on or based on the Upanishads, are part of the Karmakanda. Certainly the Puranas are. The Manusmritis are. The uh, Tantras and the five different philosophical schools, which analyze the Vedas in different ways, these are all dualistic. Why? Because they say there is a knower and the known. Only in the Upanishads and the literatures based on the Upanishads do we really see non-duality, where the knower, the known, and knowing become one. And of course, this is the pinnacle, this is the peak of self-realization. This is what we're all after. So, back to the question, where does this information come from and how is it structured? This is a context within which you can see how this knowledge is coming down to us. And even though the non-dual Upanishads are maybe 5%, I'm just, that's just a guess, or less, 
of the Vedic literature, they are actually the goal, the purpose, the aim of the whole Vedas. And we'll be explaining this in detail in our next series, which is going to be a detailed look at Mandukya Upanishad. So, let's go into the four Vedas. We have the Karma Kanda on the left and the Jnana Kanda on the right. The Karma Kanda is performance of sacred rites and rituals leading to rebirth in a pious human form. And the Jnana Kanda, non-duality, is transcendental knowledge leading to realization of the self or supreme spirit, Brahman. It's also called Vedanta, basis of the entire Vedic philosophical tradition. Now, the Vedas are divided into four types of literatures. Sanghitas, which are collections of hymns, prayers, incantations, sacrificial formulas, rules, and so on, for the Vedic sacrifices. Then the Brahmanas, which are the rites and ceremonies themselves, whereas the Vedas, or Sanghitas, contain the text of these ceremonies, the Brahmanas contain the instructions for the priests. Then there are the Aranyakas, these are secret doctrines, powers, magic, and so on, that can only be taught in the forest to close initiates. And then finally, we have the Upanishads, the philosophy of the absolute, and the Upasana, or worship, of Saguna Brahman. Because there is no worship of Nirguna Brahman. <laughs> but all these lead to its realization. The first Veda is the Rik Sanghita, called the Rig Veda. It contains mantras called Riks in the form of prayers and praises of deities. Its Brahmanas emphasize the duties of the Hotra priest. So what are those Brahmanas? Well, the first one is the Aitareya Brahmana. And within that, there is the Aitareya Aranyaka, and within that, there is the Aitareya Upanishad, which is the third part of the Aranyaka. So this was taught only to initiates. Then, then there's the Kaushitaki, or Sankhyayana Brahmana, which has within it the Kaushitaki Aranyaka and the Kaushitaki Upanishad, chapters 3 through 6 of the Aranyaka. So it is also only for initiates. The next Veda is based on the Sama Sanghita, the Sama Veda. It contains melodious chants in praise of the deities. Its Brahmanas emphasize the duties of the Udgatra priest. The Udgatra priest is the one who sings Aum and the Vedic hymns during the performance of the sacrifice. The first Brahmana is the Talavakara, or Jaimaniya Brahmana, after the sage Jaimini. And we don't know about the Aranyakas, but that one contains the Talavakara or Kena Upanishad. Then there's the Panchavinsha or Tandya Maha Brahmana, the Chandogya Brahmana, which contains the Chandogya Upanishad in its last eight chapters. Then there's the Samavidhana Brahmana, the Devatadhyaya Brahmana, the Vangsa Brahmana, and the Arsheya Brahmana. We don't know much about those, but you can look them up in Wikipedia. Next, the Yajus Samhita contains the Yajurveda, dealing with sacrifices and sacrificial formulas. Its Brahmanas emphasize the duties of the Advaryu priest. Now, the Yajurveda has two recensions, the Krishna Yajurveda and the Shukla Yajurveda. Krishna Yajurveda is an unarranged, unclear collection of verses, and that contains the Taitariya Brahmana, which contains the Taitariya Aranyaka, Prapatakas 1 through 6, and that contains the Taitariya Upanishad. Prapatakas 7 through 9, and the Narayani Upanishad, Prapataka 10. 
Then there's the three recensions, Kataka Shaka, Maitrayani Shaka, and Kaishtala Shaka. And they contain some more Upanishads, the Kata Upanishad, Shvetashvatara Upanishad, and the Maitrayani Upanishad. Next is the Shukla Yajurveda, a well-arranged, clear collection of verses. And it contains the Shatapata Brahmana and the Shatapata Aranyaka. And these contain the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad and the Ishavasya Upanishad, two very important Upanishads. It has two recensions, the Madhyandini Shaka and the Vajasaneyi Shaka. Finally, the Atarvana Sanghita is the Atarva Veda, dealing with various arts and sciences, including magic, a knowledge storehouse of the Atarvanas, the procedures for everyday life. It contains the Gopata Brahmana, and it has two shakas, two recensions, the Paipalada and the Shaunakiya, after the sages Pipalada and Shonaka. Now this Veda and its Gopata Brahmana contain many Upanishads, especially Mundaka Upanishad, Prashna Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad, Jabala Upanishad, and 23 more. So this is the whole background. This is the whole perspective. This is the whole structure of the basis of all the Vedic literatures that came after it. Now, the problem is most of the literatures coming after the Vedas focus on only one aspect of it. And this is because Vyasadeva, when he wrote, or rather compiled, the Sanghitas, Sanghita means a compilation of other writings that pre-existed, he divided them into four, and he created four acharyas, four lineages, four paramparas, or disciplic successions, that passed down each one of these Vedas and its associated Brahmanas, Aranyakas, and Upanishads. So in other words, now you have, instead of one Veda containing all spiritual knowledge, you have four Vedas, each one specializing in certain types of knowledge. And even though all four types of Vedic priests collaborate to perform these great ceremonies, great rituals. Still, they only know their particular sections of the Vedas. <laughs> they don't know the others. So they tend to specialize, in other words. And from this comes our present situation, where we have many, many different sects, and each sect has its own favorite deity, its own special types of ceremonies, its own particular culture, language, and so on. And uh, this has created somewhat of a Tower of Babel, <laughs> where these priests all have differing opinions on the original knowledge. And if you go research online any of these literatures mentioned in this chart, you will find multiple opinions, multiple explanations and interpretations of each one. It's very, very confusing. This is why we like to focus on the Upanishads, because the Upanishads have one aim, and one aim alone, and that is Brahman, the non-dual origin of everything. So this eliminates all the sectarian wrangling and the disputation and the arguing and the fighting that goes on between these different schools of brahmanas. So, in other words, God is one. Brahman is one. A Brahman is known as the one without a second. What to speak of four. <laughs> but, for example, Aum is described as having four quarters. And the quarters don't mean the four directions. They mean four parts. 
and these are the four states of consciousness, which of course are basic to the whole Vedic conception. Even though it's very strange, it seems odd to me, that almost nobody is teaching about it. Instead, they're teaching rituals, meditations, and so on, that follow from the four basic divisions of the four Vedas and their sectarian descendants. So this has created a situation where nobody really knows the whole picture. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to focus on the whole thing, the big picture, and show you the context within which all these different books have their meaning and their various places. So we've already covered so many different Vedic literatures in our previous series on this channel. We're going to continue, but we're going to focus only on the major Upanishads, the biggest and most important Upanishads. And so that will lead you, if you follow them, to master the art of consciousness and meditation and eventually realize the highest Brahman. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.